Hi guys, Catherine here. Um, this is a little short video, probably 10 or 15 minutes, um, and it's designed to talk about how you can interpret essay questions. One of the things that I find a lot of students have difficulty with is actually working out what the question is asking them and ideas for how they might respond. So you might need to watch this presentation more than once um, because it's got some sort of tricky ideas in it. Um, so please um, take the time to think about what I'm talking about here. And if I'm moving too fast, you can always press pause and have a think about things. Indeed, there are some tasks in here that I think you should pause and do before I give you the answers so that you're doing some of the thinking. So let's get started. How do you interpret essay questions? And here I'm talking about analytic text response uh, essay questions. That's fancy terms for um, an essay that responds to a particular text. In this case, the particular text that we're doing is Tony Jordan's Nine Days. So one of the things that you need to know are that there are three different kinds of essay questions you can get. Um, knowing this can help you. It can help you because then you sort of work out what do I have to do. So here they are, the three different types. The first one is a propositional uh, essay uh, prompt. And what that means is uh, a statement is made. Now that statement is not a quote directly from the text, but it's a statement that's usually included in single quotation marks. And uh, it then gives you an instruction term afterwards. So uh, you might uh, have a proposition statement that says, for example, nine days is about love and loss, discuss. The proposition there is nine days is about love and loss and the uh, instructional term for you is discuss and discuss means weigh it up. Talk about the positives, negatives, look at all sides. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples in a minute so it'll make a bit more sense. The second kind of essay question you can get is an essay question that has a quotation from the text, in other words, from nine days, within the actual prompt. Okay, so what's important here is that you need to be able to work out where does the quote come from, who's actually saying it, what does it refer to, and you should refer to the quote at some stage in your essay uh, and not just in the conclusion as a sort of afterthought. Finally, the essay questions that you are perhaps um, most used to are direct questions. So they are exactly what they sound like. It's a question. It might say, um, to what extent does or how does or why does Jordan um, use the following techniques, etc. So three different types of essay questions. Usually in the exam, they will give you a choice of two questions and those two questions are of different form. Okay, so you get a choice of two questions in the exam and usually they are different. So you might get a propositional and a quote or you might get a direct and a propositional. It gets a bit more confusing in that you can also get sort of mixed essay questions. Okay, and we're going to look at a whole range of essay questions today. So let's have a look at what this means with some really explicit examples. So um, I picked three essay uh, prompts. I call them prompts because not all of them are questions and I've arranged them into the different forms. So the first one, the proposition or the idea that is being put forward is that characters in nine days are haunted by their past. The single quotation marks around that um, statement indicate it is not a direct quote from the novel. So that's really important, not a direct quote. And the instructional term that you have been given is discuss. Discuss means weigh this up. So think about it in terms of to what extent are characters in nine days haunted by their past? Are all characters haunted by their past? What you want to do is you want to say, yeah, sure, some characters are haunted by their past, but not all. You also want to go one step further and actually look at why people are haunted by their past. And we'll talk a bit about connecting some of these essay questions to themes a bit later on. The second kind of essay prompt you can get is a quote. 
Um, this is a quote that comes from the novel directly and it's word for word or verbatim. That just means word for word. It's, the quote is, the trouble with Connie Westaway's job is not only that a newspaper is not a respectable place to work, but that Connie does not keep decent hours. Now, if you can't place that in the novel, you don't know what chapter it came from or what it says, that's not a terrific problem because this particular quote talks to a particular issue or theme. If you have a look at it, it's about respectability and women's work. So this actually looks at the theme of gender or women. It's got a question directly after it. How does Tony Jordan expose the restraints on women in nine days? Now, hopefully you have got your dictionary with you in the exam. So if you don't know what restraints mean, you can look it up. Restraints, of course, means the limitations on women. Okay, so that's a quote. Should you, at some stage in your essay, refer to that quote? Yes, you should. Do you need to quote the entire thing? It's pretty long. No, you don't. You can either shorten it by taking out the middle and including three dots or three ellipses. You can see that quote's already been shortened. Or you can actually use uh, certain phrases out of it. So the important phrases here uh, were that her job was not respectable and that she didn't keep decent hours. In other words, women were expected to be home looking after the family at certain hours of, of the night. The third and final uh, kind of essay, essay prompt is an actual question. How is the family shaped by Jean's decision making? Here you need to understand that the family is the Westaway family. Uh, and you need to understand that it's not just a question that's asking you about Jean's decision making and its impact on her children. Okay, her children being Frank, Kip and Connie. You need to think about the long term influence of the choices that she made for her family. So three different kinds of essay questions. Uh, really important that you sort of understand that you do get different forms of essay questions and they are slightly different. So essay questions often relate to theme, um, even those that have a character's name in them. And we've been talking um, about theme in our last session, I gave you um, a quote bank that has a whole range of themes in it. Now, I've colour coded these for a specific reason. I think uh, that there are many ways to look at themes in nine days. And if you read different study guides, they give you different lists of themes. And that can be really confusing for students because they often think, well, which list is right? And there is no right list. There's just, uh, what you've got to do is just come up with your own way of understanding what are the really big things that are going on in nine days. Um, here, I've got the notion of connections, that nine days shows that people connect very heavily to place and they connect through their family and their relationships with other people. Um, some points of further connection but also points of difference, in other words, points of, of challenge, are class and religion. So social class and religion. Uh, and we've talked about those previously. Um, one of the really um, prominent themes, of course, in the novel is the notion of gender and the role of women and how that role changes over generations. So if we compare the experiences of Jean and Connie to the experience of Annabelle. Uh, and then we have a look further in uh, forward in time and we have a look at the experiences of uh, Charlotte and Stanzi. Gender and women's roles in society change, okay? In what ways do they change and in what ways do they stay the same? Of course, the novel is very much about the adversities or challenges people face. Sometimes those adversities are for the whole society. So it's a adversity at a national level, uh, such as World War II, an adversity that everyone faced. Sometimes those adversities are really personal. So when Jean loses her husband, Tom, that is a really personal adversity. Uh, how people respond to those challenges shapes their life. Some people 
give in to the challenges that they face. If you think about Jean, very pessimistic, very much, you know, looking at what she doesn't have. And if you compare that to someone like Kip, who faced enormous adversity, lost his father, uh, went to war, lost his sister, um, how did he respond to adversity? In a very, very different way. So here are our themes. The reason I've colour-coded them is I had a student last year who put together a theme map for himself. And it's a really useful um, tool. So here it is. Um, hopefully you can see this in, in large on your screen. I've also put a um, link to the PDF on the website so you can download a copy. What he's done here is he's, he's done his themes slightly differently to mine. That's okay. I've matched mine up by colour. So hardships and struggles that he has in red are adversities. They're the challenges people face. Gender, of course, here he's talking about the things that... Um, distinguish people in society. Gender's one of them. He's put religion in there a, a bit as well. I guess that's, you know, um, okay. So you've got gender there. You've got social class that has religious differences embedded in, into it. So my social class is yellow, but I separate out religious differences. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, you've also got war. So what was this sort of national context of World War II? What did it inspire in people? Uh, feelings of patriotism and belonging. And what did it lead to? Um, inevitable loss. Uh, that's there. And so too is love and relationships. So if we go back, my themes connect pretty clearly to the themes of this student. And what he did was he used this as a map to help him to decode or interpret essay questions. So if you're able to print it up and have a copy of it in front of you, it can really, really help. Of course, you could go next level on this too. You could stick this onto a bit of paper and around each of these different points, you could add quotes that are related to each. That becomes then a super tool for writing your essay. Up to you, just some resources and some ideas. So let's get to the point where we talk about the essay questions and what essay questions reveal or speak to in terms of themes. I encourage all of my students to always cut through the essay prompts via theme. If you just talk about characters and events, all you're doing is retelling the story or recounting the narrative. And that usually results in a very low mark. So what I've got here is I've got five different essay prompts. What you might like to do right now is pause and work out which of these prompts are propositional, which are quotational, and which are direct questions. There is examples of two here. So you might notice that one kind of essay question uh, or essay form is missing. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about that. So have a pause, go through these six, five, sorry, five essay questions and work out what kinds of essay questions are they? Are they propositional? Are they quotational or are they direct questions? Here's a hint. There's no direct questions here because we've got quotes and propositions in every one of them. Okay, once you've done that, restart the video and let's start to think about what do these quotes um, mean in terms of theme. So if we have a look at the first one. You've got a direct quotation there. It seems that all my life I've had nothing I've desired. That could be someone like Connie or Jean. Not sure. It then says, in nine days, it is the women who have little or no control over their lives discuss. Okay, That's a really interesting um, prompt because you have a, a direct quotation. You have a proposition as well. So what you're being asked to do is to weigh up do women only, well, do all the women in nine days have no control over their lives or limited control? Uh, my answer to that would, of course, be no. Um, nine days actually reveals that some women do have control over their lives, um, particularly women who were born, uh, you know, later after World War II, where you, where you have different social sort of um, circumstances. But let's have a look at how I've mapped up 
this question and the ones below in theme and I'm going to run through them. Okay, so the first question really clearly is about gender. Okay, it's about women. Um, that's not, not a, a difficult one. The second one, Annabelle says, that's what war means. It should be all over now and here we are at the dance, but there are holes in the crowd. Tony Jord Jordan reveals the holes left by war. Discuss. Clearly, that's about war. Okay, that's not a problem. You should find that quite simple. In nine days, the men's lives are just as miserable as the women's. That's about gender. Okay, so it's suggesting that, you know, men faced a whole range of limitations and challenges themselves. The fourth one, nine days demonstrates that individuals are strengthened by adversity. Do you agree? Well, that one's about adversity. Now, if I was to colour code these just by these themes, I think that I'd be missing some of the depth in these essay questions. So step one, let's go over it, was to work out what type of essay question is this, okay? So if you look at the first one, it is a quotation with a proposition. The main theme is women, but are there other themes there? One way to cut into this, to think about it, is to have a look at it. In nine days, it is the women who have little or no control over their lives. Well, you could argue that men who go to war don't have much uh, control over their lives as well. So you could whack in a purple there. Uh, you could also argue that it's about the way in which women deal with adversity the challenges that are presented to them and the way that they can sort of either tackle them or not tackle them but give them control in their lives. So you could have in these some extra ones. So that top one I could add adversity and I could add war. The second one I've added a few extras too. Let me explain. Annabelle says that's what war means. It should be all over now um, and here we are at the dance but there are holes in the crowd. Tony Jordan reveals the holes left by war. Okay, so it's, of course it's about war. But Tony Jordan doesn't only reveal the holes left by war. So one way of carving up or interpreting this essay is to say, yes, most certainly, war did leave huge holes in the crowd. You had a generation that was affected in some way by losing a father, a brother, a husband, a son. But Tony Jordan also reveals the power of family and love to heal, okay? So I could then jump to the, okay, sure, she talks about the holes left by war, but she also talks about how people can overcome those things. Have a look at Kip as an example. He was at war. He lost his sister. He lost a whole range of friends uh, and um, his father. He faced a whole range of adversities. War was one of them. But he did manage to have a meaningful life because he made connections with his family and important relationships such as the one with his wife. Another really important thing that drove people like Kip to um, a more successful life is that he had strong connections to place. So see what I can do there is I can string my essay through several themes. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the fourth one here. Nine days demonstrates that individuals are strengthened by adversity. Do you agree? Well, certainly, I'm running the same argument here. Certainly, adversity uh, presents challenges. And some people, I'm going to blue now, can overcome these because they uh, have the support and love of their family and they have strong connections to place. But I could add on here, however, other individuals are not strengthened by adversity. Who is not strengthened by adversity? Well, Jean isn't. Why? Because she sees her, her role as a woman, as limiting. She uh, has strong um, ideas about class differences and is not open to, you know, moving beyond her very rigid way of thinking. So I could actually do a whole range of themes in that single question. Let's have a look at the next one. Jack says that fact is everyone changes a little bit all the time. We age and shrink and grow and soften and harden. To what extent are the characters in nine days able to change? This is a hard question. Um, it's hard because it actually cuts through everything. So I was starting to think about, okay, what characters change? What characters don't change? Ooh, what do all characters face? What does 
everyone face in their life. They face adversity, challenges. Every single one of us, you, me, the whole world, we face challenges. We're facing one right now. We're in quarantine, COVID-19, okay? Not great. What we can draw on, however, is we can draw on how we see ourselves. We can draw on, uh, you know, our own reserves. So the way in which we see adversity in nine days is people uh, experience adversity either because they're a woman or because of the war. So two of the ways in which people experience diversity are there. So different lenses, okay? And I would look at those different lenses. Uh, how do they or how can they through these challenges, whether it's the challenges of being a, a woman in a you know 1940s society or the challenges of a nation at war, how can they make their way through it? Well, they can make their way through it if they have connections, if they're able to uh, lay down roots in a physical place such as Rowena Parade, if they're able to make connections with other people and grow a family and have uh, relationships, they can do it. However, if they see the world, you know, through, through um, I guess, black and white thinking and they see themselves as better or worse than other people, this can limit their ability to change. So what I've done there is I've actually gone right through every theme, thinking about what could I do here. So your themes become a lens through which you can start to think about different essay questions. So next week, we're going to be talking about essay questions a lot more. And I want to leave you with the essay questions from the 2019 exam. So nine days was examined um, in the VCE for the first time last year. And here are the two questions. Um, number one, in Jordan's novel, seemingly insignificant decisions have major consequences. Do you agree? Uh, and the second one, how does nine days explore the relationship between the past and the present? So if I purely look at the different forms of uh, essay questions, the first one is a proposition. So you've got a proposition followed by a question. And the second one is a direct question. So you have to choose one of these questions. And I'm here to tell you that these questions um, are not as easy as you might have thought. They're also not as difficult as they seem when you stare at the, at the, the questions on the page. Um, here's what I want you to do. I've said they, they're hard. These questions are hard because they don't easily map to themes. I want you to consider how you might interpret these. Could you use characters? Um, could you start to think about uh, d different ways of looking through multiple themes? This is going to be the starting point for our discussion next week, okay? So what I want you to do right now is um, have a think about what you've learnt from this little video and I want you to post any questions you have or confusions or ideas onto the Padlet. Details on how to do that are on the Weebly website. Okay, see you soon.